welcome back to the class currently going into our third match for the first week of 5v5 against gertie we did manage to win our last match after we lost our first so we're kind of in the the middle rung here and before we go ahead and take a look at the opponent's board here looking at his overall roster he does we're we're back up to people who just have an atrocious amount of relic levels we were bouncing around people who had double digits we're back into uh, a guy who has 300 more relic levels than us so we do have that going against us we do have him beat fairly decently in mods like they're not huge margins on the upper part like i think we only have like what 50 more plus 20s than him we have 100 more plus 15 so maybe that will rear its head omicrons are about the same he has nine we have 10 nothing really leaning hard in the one direction or the other and then as far as meta fleets go though he does have profundity and we don't and i do think that can make a difference that ultimately might just be our downfall here so i obviously can't see ships yet but i haven't changed my strategy defense strategy from last time we're still running the savage team with trey here i don't love this but i i burned myself a lot the first match by not having c for offense because i definitely needed that up top is just jmk ray dash which that doesn't this this wall hasn't been touched yet the only two people that have played against me have always just gone through the bottom route so we'll see if that trend continues i'm guessing my opponent is hoping i do the same good teams but not like great teams we have rogue one we have qui Gunjin, we have ray with no jtr and no dash which means we get to vader this uh not sure exactly how that'll happen and then ooh, this is gonna be fun we might have a shot at wampa in the, the item the issue is and the reason why i say a shot and not a guarantee They've got grit, so that is very anti-Wampa. We'll have to see if they have the healing immunity, though, because eventually, Wampa, while the dots won't be doing damage, he will eventually get a stupid amount of offense and maybe just one-shot someone. So we'll have to see if the healing immunity sticks. And then bottom, we do have to deal with Dashacron, despite it not being on Ray. Lord Vader is here. The Datacron is pretty good, and it's the mastery one as well as the, the cooldown other stats aren't that great i mean armor penetration is good but i deflection i fear a lot more so i'm not sure what we're gonna do here i want to do the bam one but at the same time thrawn's there so i don't know this is the grievous food always has been always will be i guess i should actually check out your cron i think i think grievous still works with that honestly i guess we'll find out and then last but not least we have malgus and that's just gonna have to and now coming into the actual battles we are gonna start things off oh this is this is a fun GC, guys. Start things off with our Grievous versus the Emperor Palpatine team. And as you can see, or rather the Starkiller team, their Emperor Palpatine and Mara Jade have the Datacron that allows them to refresh their cooldowns constantly. And one of the neat things about this is Mara Jade is never going to use Shock against us, ever. Because she's always going to get back to her Tenacity Down cooldown, and that's what her AR prioritizes, so that's what she's going to use. So B2 is able to interrupt this process. We're able to apply target lock, and then it's it's just game over from here. We kill Mara very quickly. We're able to get extortion onto Starkiller to kind of hold him back, get rid of Vesis. So now, I mean, we're looking really good. I specifically didn't heal Newt because him dying once is actually really nice. But I mean, yeah, we just, we, we rip right through them and honestly quite quickly. So get on you, Grievous. 68 man i know it's the 10 bonus but even 50 oh oh this is fun so we two last round we two manned a jml team and now we're gonna get the two man a ray team and this there was a little bit of luck involved in here the fin was rather fast but piet's opening aoe actually got the turn meter release on it from vader's lead and pushed him back so now we're not only going in we're getting a bunch of these dots and everything on everyone we're also stacking Emperor's Trap, so our offense is stacking as well as our potency from that. And I'm trying to line things up here correctly so that we get, number one, a really big hit on Ray from Emperor's Trap, but also from Dots. And what I learned last time is apparently you want someone else to also have the little Vader symbol, because otherwise you lose the buff once you do the attack. Uh, so that's exactly what we're doing. We're just going around with basics. We killed Haldo. I wasn't really intentional, but okay, I'll take it. And now i'm thinking okay let's maybe probably basic one more time on r2 that way we get one more emperor's trap and then just really hope that the a or not the aoe but my uh, my coin blade kills ray we did also try to make an effort to ability block all the sides so once they come out they can't do a whole lot and yeah i think 
think it might have worked even if that didn't happen because we still had the revive but it's really kind of cool that it did so we have ability blocked everyone we put dots on everyone and now we just have to kind of let things pass because if they don't take turns uh then they don't die so we have to let them take a turn here and then once as soon as they do i mean they both have what 20 dots on them and even if they didn't still get yeeted by vader so very good job on lord vader's datacron's part now we have the jml and this is this is the good j or not the jml dash and this is a very good dash datacron so i went ahead and took in double cleanse with jedi knight revan and shock t and also i took in Jedi luke and hodo we really just didn't have a reason to save a lot of our jedi all of our other counters are for the most part working and i didn't want to let dash get out of hand so we control the feared we cleanse when we needed to to get rid of the aoe days which is really the major threat for jml is you just not getting off the leader ability you're not killing anyone make sure to kill vandor first because this this guy does have the omicron as well as the datacron for dash um which i didn't really see a great solution for a non-galactic legend so we took that in this this is some good rng but the my intention here was to kill thrawn this is the mastery variation of lord vader so it's the one that does a stupid amount of damage maul comes in and wastes all five hits on his AR. Thrawn comes in and fractures my zombie that isn't taunting. So now, not only do we have the uh, shield tech on SLKR from Watt, so that we'll always get rid of the healing immunity from Lord Vader, but we also have three stacks of Beskar. So we're going to be recovering pretty much full protection every single turn, and we're also going to have higher health pools, more defense, and be immune to crits, and also counter. So slkr is i mean i don't know if it's possible for gl to go into god mode outside of what is essentially already god mode like an ult or something but this this is it and this is honestly it, it's it's pretty scary so we go we do go ult a little bit early just so maul doesn't get to unleash all five stacks on us again and now what i'm trying to do here is i'm just trying to get as far into um the, our master as we can get and I, again i want to kill thrawn because if we can kill thrawn i can very easily clean this up with bam fennec if we don't kill thrawn then we're probably in trouble um so thrawn is still fractured we just go ahead and aoe him so we get the extra mastery and now we can go into our another ult while lord vader also does so his lord vader's mastery is pretty high we get the stun here on royal guard specifically because i, I would rather get two swipes on a stunned character than three on a non-stunned if that makes sense so we keep going in we just kill him and yeah, Lord Vader is struggling to get SLKR down with the amount of bonuses we have from Watchmocot. And then we just kill him. But as I said in stream, this is the best two shot I've ever had because that was my intention. Instead, SLKR just wiped the floor with Lord Vader. It was it was quite a thing. So now we, we have to beat Malgus. And we we took in a bunch of sides just because I was a little bit worried about their, their data crown. Overall, the team's pretty strong. And I... You, you, I could just give Watt to this team and be fine, but we had to use Watt with SLKR, so that wasn't really an option. I don't have a lot of Sith over R5, and I wanted to use C's Datacron that lets him get a ton of ult charge. The, it's the one that gives 6%. So we brought in Duke and Insidious because they're Sith, and we'll, we'll get the full cleanse, that full fun thing. And then we brought in Dark just because Dark is not a tank, but he does cleanse pretty regularly whenever they get rid of one of his stacks. And it's just a little bit harder to get all the way through because what I... I need a one ally to be alive when we get ult so that Talon and Basilashan Fallen don't like back-to-back -back ability block me, which is exactly what happened. We had one ally left when we got to ult, and now we're just able to point at Malak, and I think I just clicked auto. Um, you don't want you don't want to kill Basilashan Fallen here because your shock isn't irresistible. So if you don't if Malak's tenacity keeps increasing and you don't actually get the shock, then you might not even kill him. So we did that, and then we go into this very tense match with Wampa versus Aiden. So as you can probably clearly see here, this is Grit Aiden. So uh, this this poses a few issues for Wampa. Number one, his dots don't do dot damage, so that's a pretty big bummer. Uh, number two, we also, whenever they put up their protection up from either Aiden or range, it makes them super stinking thick. It, it, it's very hard for Wampa. To get through so you almost have to wait till it goes down naturally and we're in i'm really trying to prioritize as much as possible the roar and you'll even see and i typically wouldn't do this in a battle i'm going to prioritize the roar over the icebreaker just because the only way that we're really going to get through this is with consistent healing immunity as well as just a ton of stacked offense so i don't 
I don't really need the tenacity or like the, the protection, or not the protection, but the survivability stats that come with the uh, his roar. I'm just trying trying to get our offense up there because we're we're very likely gonna have to two or three shot those tanks. And they, I think it's an I think it's an R7 shore. So he's really tanky. One of the nice things though is nobody on this team is modded for tenacity. So that that pretty much means our healing immunity is going to land consistently or at least semi-consistently to the point where we can actually start to work them down. You can see we're, we're building a decent amount of offense here, but at the same time, it is it is a little bit of a pain in the butt because they, they have, Aiden has a fairly consistent cleanse. So we have to try to wait for this right opportunity to land healing immunity for them not to cleanse and for them not to have the massive amount of protection up that comes from range in Aiden. It's, it's very hard to get through because the protection up is built on max health and since grit makes the math health huge it, it, it's a problem so I, I see that storm has an opportunity we have an opportunity to kill him so I, I i just go for it i don't i don't really hesitate there we're able to get death down as well i'm not sure if that was the right move i think you really really wanted it i think i wanted to take the opportunity to be able to get sure because ultimately the, the tank's going to be the bigger problem and you arguably you want more troopers to be alive when you're going after the tanks because while dots can't do damage to the trooper team via their normal damage wampa does have an extra stacking offense mechanic for how many dots are on the field so you have more damage against the shore with five characters little dots than you do with two uh but but it worked kind of came down to the wire but we were fine uh so coming this is a this is a wannabe turbo qui-gon Jin team so within the kyber one occasionally run into someone who puts stupid amounts of speed on this exact team or a team very similar where it's Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin, and then also Cam and Ahsoka. And if you have a really fast squad, like 300 base, and then with all the other bonuses, you kind of stop Bad Batch because what will happen is your whole team will go first and you, if Ahsoka, Jenna, Anakin, and Cam all go before your Bad Batch do, they'll kill Echo. They'll be able to remove his Wesh McCaw and it'll be fine. That being said, as you guys can see from the very beginning, this team was not faster so we didn't even have to worry about that um we do we didn't land the right stuns though so i had to do this in a really weird order the point um where actually anakin gets all his turns he's actually the last one to be killed which is weird it's that's not how you really want to do this at all um but it's, it's just kind of how it worked out and he does he does die and we get our 61 and that's fine uh, we go ahead and take in our rebels versus the ad red team uh Pretty much just because I could. I think we're going to probably start putting CLS on defense from now on. Just because the Kron I have, the Smuggler Kron I have for them, it rolled a decent... I think it rolled like 30% dodge or deflection or something like that. Uh, so, I think it's probably going to pull a little bit more fun things on defense, potentially. I guess we'll we'll find out uh, during the next week. But yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know how much strategy there actually is behind this. I think we just kind of bulldozed them and that's, that's fine on my... for me. Uh, so we have to get rid of this bam team and this is is the level nine bam cron with the super damage birds and i go with qui-gon jinn and cam and i'm like okay i think i think we can probably just blow them up so we don't we actually don't trigger the birds and that's what i was trying to do with jenna and anakin i was just trying to trigger the birds so we didn't have to deal with a huge amount of them and then the again the ai just and this one the ai pretty consistently plays poorly where they will they will not kill Qui-Gon Jinn. They will go after one of the other Jedi that have a weaker health pool, which is typically how the AI works in general. Um, but that being said, I mean, they don't... I don't think they ever go for my Qui-Gon Jinn. So, super birds or not, bam, goes down pretty hard here. So, that was a pretty satisfying win. 60 banners there. And now, we need to take our bounty hunters. And I, I need to, I need to do, change this, actually, for next, uh, next time. I have my Iden on defense right now, and I, I really shouldn't. I really should have Aiden on offense specifically to deal with this team, just because they punch up, and then bounty hunters can go and kill, you know, a ton of better things. We even, we misplay this a little bit. We get our contract correctly, we kill Kalkotarn, and then what I should have done here is I should have gone all in on Hoth Rebel Scout and only allowed Mon Mothman to have two characters at a time after the revive. Instead, I tried to get cheeky, for lack of a better word, against Kara. Didn't kill her. They bring back Pow, which was the only option because Kyle Katarn was perma-killed. And now they're able to get this really annoying turn meter train going. It, it's honestly very frustrating because my I, it feels like my team isn't moving at all because it probably isn't. Um, luckily, Zam does get a turn and we're able to use her specials. That they're not going to do a whole lot to stop the enemy team, 
because they have a lot of debuffs, they can heal our whole team through boss lead. So that is pretty nice. And then um, eventually, this does take a while, but eventually I believe Grief does get a turn. I go for the turn meter because like, all right, we need, we need to get Mando back into things. We need to get him critting stuff. So we go and <sighs> killed Car with Potency Up, which was a big waste. Uh, but then we do come in with Grief, get another kill. And this time we were able to remove everything. So that was very nice. And then Zam whiffs on hitting one of the thermals. So that was annoying. And then at this point, I'm just I'm not going to try to get fun with spraying out the damage. We're just trying to go for the kills and we do get them down. So that worked out very well. We're going to get taking Geos and Gideon now versus this new team. The new team, I mean, it's not it's not very good. I mean, Ari Dad Bob Boba as a fifth isn't isn't going to change much. They do get Armor Shred on their Duke immediately. And I, I need him to die because what I don't want to happen is for us to get stuck behind Nest. Uh, which is very likely what's gonna, what would, would happen. So we're able to get rid of Duke immediately. With Gideon, we were able to be faster than him. You know, his, his Demoralize actually helps a lot too. And I don't, I'm not really sure why we went after Droidica there. We probably should have been going after Dad Bob just because Droidica had damage immunity. And I don't have Fun Sack to be able to clear it immediately. So um, we do start going in on him now. We get an Expose. We use Spy's big hit to go to go through the whatchamacallit and kill Droidica. I do. I didn't. I, I, I neglected to play this initial part well because what, what we should have been doing this entire time was trying to time Nests, um, the, our, our kill on Nest. Because if you're not careful, the Geos just don't get through her because they're not able to time Spy's big hit. And one of the easiest ways you can time Spy's big hit is by hitting other characters and then just let Spy one-shot Ness. So and instead of that, we, we kill a lot of other characters. Probably should have left Droidica around or something, especially with damage immunity. We, we could have timed things really well with him. Uh, but we didn't. We, we we forgot to do that. So what, what I'm doing actually now is I'm hitting Nest a ton. And this is weird. We're letting extortion spread so that we go slower. And therefore, Spy should have a better opportunity where Ness doesn't have any protection up because she'll be taking more turns than we are. Weird way to do things, uh, but it's part of the strategy here. So we do do power up, and we don't, we're not able to line it up. Newt dies, unfortunately, very quickly. I don't have the attack lined up, so I'm like, okay, we're, we're just going to have to really be reliant on RNG here. Give us what we want, and it gives it to us. So I ends up annihilating Ness there, and that's that's it for ground. We honestly, there, I mean, I know there were some really good moments of RNG, moments of RNG, but we. We obliterated this guy in ground, and he set a pretty good defense. I mean, both Dash and LV Kron went down, and then Vader two-manning the Ray. Good time. It was a really stinking good time. So, go ahead and take in Fleet. Fleet is pretty much what everyone is setting nowadays, which is Empire, or at least whatever setting it's me is Empire, Executor, and Holdo. And, it, it, I mean, it, it does well, but it's we use the same counters every single time. We use our Separatists. They never really fail. They do do poorly in banners, I'll say that much. Um, and something everybody's been telling me, and maybe someone can link me a video in the comments because community oriented, I guess. Um, the, the, the best way to actually do this is to start Geos. I've never looked into it just because this never really fails for me, albeit that little moment right there wasn't super comfortable. Um, but yeah, I've been told that a lot that full Geos is a better starting lineup, and I'm I, I don't doubt it, I just have never done it, so I don't feel comfortable doing it right out in the GAC, but. If it's like a bit dynasty thing and or you know another content creator that i also would trust like i would would probably like to know that because you know as much as i love winning 63 banners probably isn't what i should be getting every single match and that that seems to be pretty consistent so 63 there it is so now we're we're going to try to use our burner and rebels versus executor um i've been having a hard time lining the burner up correctly and i do something really dumb here I'm not going to do this again. We we used a turn meter removal move on Razor Crest. So we he wasn't end up able to take a turn. Luckily, they didn't go right after Millennium Falcon. They didn't ever kill my Y-Wing. So that wasn't ideal. Uh, but even with Y-Wing dead, we get the... It might have actually been ideal. Because now we have a guaranteed assist from Millennium Falcon on this one. And a guaranteed assist again from Millennium Falcon. Because Biggs is only going to call in one ally. And if their only ally is the Falcon, then we're fine. Um, but yes, yeah, so we get we get through what's his face immediately. I don't. I'm like, okay, let's 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 play here. Let's bring in wedge, get buff immunity, rip that off, and then hopefully we can probably just kill IG because I'm I'm no I don't know if I'm going to be going for you know the whole shebang here. 
but I would like to be able to at least get a few ships down so that Radis or something can come in and clean this up. Uh, Falcon is not assisting, which is really not good. We do get an assist there, so that was nice. Uh, and then Wedge survives just long enough for us to take down IG, which is very nice of him. And now they he dies. And I'm like, okay, again, if I can, if we can get rid of Razorcrest here, I think Radis cleans this up really well. So we just taken Cassin just purely, pretty much for the, the the dispel and the assist, which is I guess the only reason Cassian ever comes in. Um, but yeah, this works out really well. Like we can, luckily we're both debuffed here too now. So if I can give both of us I think 50% turn meter because we're debuffed and we're both rebels, um, and then we can go in and hopefully just kill Razorcrest. So I don't I don't do the spin just because I don't want Hounds to the taunt. And now that Razorcrest is out. We're not going to win. Sure, that's that's true. But at the same time, we're going to be... Actually, we could have wiggled before because there's an Empire character there. Uh, but now this is very much clean up a bowl. And I, I I try to go for the assist rather than just having Millennium Falcon get a bunch of turns with the ultimate. I think, really, Rebel Ultimate, you, you need to have multiple Rebels on the field. I don't, I don't think Millennium Falcon was going to do too much. So we went ahead and brought in uh, another character that had an AoE. I want to I wanna be just try to snipe uh, Slave 1 in the back there. That's exactly what we did. They get their ultimate. That's quite honestly fine. It doesn't really matter. Well, I mean, it's it's not good. But at the same time, with just Hounds who's sitting there, Thrawn can clean this up. They have no offensive output. Uh, Thrawn isn't going to time out because of his Annihilate. And everything will be fine in the world. So we do we do make sure to go ahead and kill their Radis fleet first with First Order. Just so we don't we know we don't have to use a specific team against that. Because I, I really I, I want the full clear here. Um... So yeah, we go ahead and go in with our first order. And I guess I'll go ahead and give the ending now. Again, since this is the last battle, I'm not actually able to show how my opponent did. He didn't end up attacking until well into the second day. And he struggled pretty... I'll just see what teams use, but he struggled pretty hardcore. He did, was not able... He wasn't able to full clear. In fact, he, he, got, he lost to Ray Dash up top. Just couldn't get through it. And he put four battles into Lord Vader... He failed on gas, and I think he failed on something. I think it might have been Malgus in the bottom wall, too, as well as someone. In, I want to say someone in the back wall. He dro dropped a lot of battles, and ultimately, I don't know if those those battles were all important, but his um, ultimately, I think Ray Dash might have just been the limit because he tried that once, didn't get a single kill, and I'm guessing whatever his counter is just wasn't there. So I th we've done this battle about a thousand times of... Uh, Radis or first order versus Radis, really not not a huge threat the only thing that can happen is if they get way too many dodges in a row then you just don't get your kill and you lose i think i think that has happened a total of one time where we we just don't get anywhere so we go ahead and give turn meter to our silencer again and again and again get the main damage dealing targets out of there just basic them because why not and then we're able to take him down and just keep coming in. And there goes the resistance pilot here shortly. So we did, again, we did end up winning. We go a total of, uh, we go a total of two and one for the week. Pretty good start. Starting to climb our way back up there. Hopefully, these, la these last two sets of data crimes have been a lot kinder than they, the first three to me. So that, that is very nice. And I shout out to our opponent. Good job. I'm very curious to see what he used. And I'm definitely very happy with the amount of RNG we did get in a in a in a, really in a lot of these fights especially especially the lord vader one i mean even if it wasn't that good if we would have just been able to kill thrawn that probably would have worked but it, it was really cool to see slk go in there and just level lord vader even though lord vader had pretty much everything going for him but yeah we go ahead and bring in thrawn here now to clean up just the hounds too this is a pretty this is actually why i saved thrawn for offense is specifically because he can do this. He can annihilate a house tooth. And Targan, Targan does pretty well on defense. Like he, he does almost as good as Thrawn does. So, really, really a good trade because Tarkin, as much as I love the dude, probably wouldn't be able to do this, or at least not my Tarkin, which I need to need to upgrade the rest of his ship things. But that is gonna be it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and as always, stay awesome.